And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode number 34. Well, quite the special one today. Um, as they all are, we're going to travel out west a little bit. I'm, I've not exhausted my local supply of Aerostars, but I thought um, maybe, you know, this one sort of caught my eye because it was in a Fans of Ford Aerostars Facebook group. And uh, recently back home, one, of, one that I really wanted to capture bought and sold just like that so I was kind of missing out and I said I don't want to miss out on this one um, so we travel out to Billings Montana to see a 1988 Ford Aerostar listed for just $800 and boy she is a beauty a gem the first thing that will jump out at us is it has 306,549 miles boy what an impressive figure for a Ford Aerostar. Now we consistently see them over 200,000 miles, but 300,000 miles, I believe actually the first one I ever did, episode one of Year of the Aerostar, was a 300,000 mile one, and I don't think we've seen one since. So that is quite impressive uh, for this 1988 spaceship that goes on the ground. Automatic transmission, exterior blue, interior blue. A lot of blue on the Year of the Aerostar lately. Fuel type gasoline, and the vehicle is paid off. Well. Quite honestly, I should hope so by now. <laughs> All right, seller's description. Needs work, cranks, but won't turn over. Would make a cool project. Has custom interior seats. We'll see that in a minute. Our, has custom interior seats are good, but side trim needs fixed. Again, another one of these beautiful. It's like kind of like in Wheel of Fortune when you have before and after. Would make a cool project. Has custom interior seats or has custom interior seats are good. Or is it interior seats are good? But side, oh, maybe it is, has custom interior, period, seats are good. Now, that actually makes sense because interior seats is sort of a, you know, redundant, I guess. So, I, you know, I, I'm catching the, catching the seller's drift now. Uh, are good, but side trim needs fixed. Has costume beadwork on visors, ooh la la, brand new battery put in. Comes with water pump, will need to be towed. Well. Um, let's get right into this, shall we? Now, I started on this picture because this is one of my favorite Aerostar pictures of all time. You know, um, just goes to show you that everyone's an artist, and sometimes unintentionally, but this setting here in front of this chain link fence and your beautiful crystal blue sky in the background that mimics the colors, the color of the Aerostar, and of course you have some beautiful rays hitting it. I just think a very, very, you have that little mailbox there. Very, very iconic picture, and this will definitely be the cover photo. And, um, you know, now that I've got all these uh, storage of Aerostar photos, I think maybe sometime I should do something with it. Now, I did not take these photos, so I, I can't quite c claim ownership of them. But nonetheless, a sweet Aerostar collage or something would be great. So, just wanted to point that out. All sorts of manner of things to see. Right off the bat, looks like we have a chrome gas door. We have chrome little uh, pieces on your sort of side bulges, your wheel wells. We have a beautiful white wall tire. It even looks like we have a, maybe a turbine wheel going on here. I love turbine wheels. C3 Corvettes with a turbine wheel, mm, chef's kiss. It's the best. I absolutely love the look of a turbine wheel. And of course they do look great on an Aerostar. We also have body colored um, bumpers or bumperettes or bumper covers here. A favorite of mine here in Year of the Aerostar. I think this, um, this sort of emerald blue. I know emerald's usually a green, but I would call this an emerald blue. And of course, last but certainly not least, this beautiful running board here, um, which does look aftermarket, but I don't, I don't know what Ford was offering in there sort of, might've been like a half aftermarket, you know, a half aftermarket, um, where Ford offered it as a package. It came to the dealership, but it wasn't actually supplied by them with a beautiful sort of inlay step here. And what I love about this step is it actually maintains sort of the, the counterbalance angularity that we see in the uh, windows of the Aerostar. So it almost runs in that, and that runs sort of, you know, against the grain of your windshield and all your forward facing angularities. Just to, I mean, this thing just, it sits right, like Jay Leno likes to say, it just sits right. It has a beautiful stance to it. I love the accessorizing that's been done on it. It's all very tasteful. It all goes together very, very well. Everything body colored. 
And of course, perhaps your piece de resistance is this, um, you know, top of your windshield little front spoiler here, which I absolutely love. I would love to get my hands on one of these. It would be worth it to buy this van just for that alone. But again, if you bought it, I, I don't think you should, could really remove it because um, it's just sort of the whole package here. So let's skip around and see some other angles. Um, we get a great view of a little like lovely tri uh, pinstripe here. We have like a sky blue, a white, and then almost a teal. That is a very lovely package. It's almost like, you know, you see a lot of Aerostars that look, um, you know, very similar, your greens and stuff. But then especially when you go back into the 80s, the amount of different pinstriping and color options that there were in graphics packages is just astounding. You know, there's so many out there. And the Aerostar is so great, of course, because it is a singular unit you know the design never changed of course the interior got updated there were different um, packages offered and different wheel options and you know you had some slight changing to the front fascia and the grille but the basic um, iconic shape of the aerostar never changed yet within that there is so much variation the closer you look and see all these you know different little packages looks like we have a dark blue interior yes well we won't spoil that but the interior is something on this aerostar to see now you have running board of course here with step up looks like it's a two-piece and you have step up bars both for the um, front and for the rear so these wonderful little concave um, you know cutouts have been made perfectly to step right into it looks very functional don't see a lot of rust on this vehicle either i'm not sure if montana is a real rust bed now um i f forgot who made the comment and i apologize but i'm just noticing this looks like this also has this what i call the limous limousine spoiler which i'm told was a tv or radio antenna so it's even got that for me it looks like it even has a, a moon roof in it which is amazing i don't know if i've ever seen a moon roof in an aerostar i do not believe that was offered as a factory option so just a whole lot of van going on here all right, so we see another great picture of the uh, sort of rear three-quarter. It looks like we almost have a little bit of a, I didn't even notice this, and your tri-pinstripe, the end of it sort of flares out into this beautiful um, little design here, this little waterfall. I think that's very nice, very tasteful. And boy, to get these um, graphics packages uh, on an Aerostar, now I, and I am seeing some rust here as I jump around a little bit. apologize for that. But this is very common with these running boards. Seems like for whatever reason, water sort of, sort of piled on in my 93 Aerostar. One side's immaculate condition, the other one has a big gaping hole right in the bottom of the door. And it just seems like that's where water like to collect or something and, and, and rust is caused on those rockers. You see it on Aerostars without the running boards, but it seems like maybe just more pronounced with them with running boards. Again, your beautiful chrome uh, arches on your running boards here. Looks like your rear bumper does have some damage to it. So certainly, you know, seen its, seen its age, when you've traveled 300,000 miles, you're bound to have a couple of nicks and dents and things of that nature. White wall tires with these turbine wheels are just beautiful. I love the look of it. I love white wall tires on anything. I'm such a sucker for white wall tires. I wanted to put them in my Fiat X19. And people in the, you know, message boards or whatever were saying how it was such sacrilege. But, you know, that's the beauty of owning a vehicle. You get to do to it what you want. It's your vehicle. And uh, everyone has their own taste. So it looks like there might be a center cap or something missing on these wheels. I can't imagine those were factory, but they do look very, very good on this van. Everything is done. Everything is very consistent, and there's a lot of continuity in the sort of aesthetic choices that were made around this van, which I do appreciate. It looks like you have a window molding kind of dropping off there. No big deal. Shove that back in there. Ah, oh, okay, some front end damage, <laughs> but I, I, I don't even, you know, I notice it, but, you know, it just adds to the janky appeal of this van. And um, your headlight bezel's coming loose, some front end damage to your uh, bumper here too, your bumper cover. Of course, it does have the original five spoke grill that was made through 86 from 86 to 88. And that is, uh, I think my favorite overall Aerostar grill. Certainly changes the look of it and a very easy way to identify a, a first three model years of the Aerostar. Um, but obviously just stunning, good looks. Looks like it's parked out front alongside the road here. Um, and it, boy, it really looks nice with that, that front spoiler on the top. And you can see the ridges of the roof almost go right into the spoiler. I'll zoom in here a little bit more, which is a great, great touch. But that's not even, we're not even getting warmed up here. Uh, we'll look at the back. It looks like we have a great uh, Big Sky Cruisers car club. That's great. I love the decals. I love the Montana plate. You know, it's so funny you see all these Ferraris and Lamborghinis with their Montana plates on them now because there's all sort of tax and LLC and title and registration loopholes you can do to register a car in Montana. Um, 
So what better place to see a Montana license plate than an actual um, you know, Billings, Montana Ford Aerostar. I think it looks very, very appropriate and you could pull right up to that Lamborghini or that Ferrari and even have like your Italian colors on your, um, you know, flag here. Now that also may be Mexican colors. I don't know. Either way. Um, you know, you show up to one of these exotics at a stoplight, they got their Montana plate, you got your Montana plate, and uh, you're both driving, you know, exotic classic cars. So, um, obviously we see the rear bumper. Now this is just like janky, just janky perfection. You got your dangling license plate sort of hanging on here. Your Aerostar logo has fallen off. Don't worry, I got quite a few spares that I could slap on there. I have been buying them off eBay on the regular, just in case they ever go into shortage. So, let's get to the interior. Oh my goodness. First of all, the dark blue interior, very, very nice. And what we have to immediately point out here, of course, is this custom modified interior. And it looks like these seats have actually been redone. They don't look like seat covers. You know, it's got the full treatment, got your air lumbar support here, um, this beautiful blue velvet sort of swirl going on. And, and they've even, you know, maintained the it looks like a very nice job that was done on it. You have all these little ridges going in here. You see all the, the normal lines that come in an Aerostar seat, but done in this beautiful. Now, these are no longer two-tone, I guess, but that's quite all right with me. And, of course, the legendary chain steering wheel. Uh, I can't imagine this is the most functional um, apparatus ever, but, boy, it does really complete the look in this Aerostar, does it not? Crank windows here, of course, and... Uh, Crank windows always good just in case you drive off of a pier. And uh, contrary to popular belief, you cannot drive a stock Aerostar into water. It will not, um, you know, stay above the water, even though it looks like it, it probably could, because it looks like, you know, whether it's an aquatic vessel or a spaceship, outer space vessel or a road going vehicle, it really like, looks like it can do just about anything. Um, but you can certainly have a good time in this Aerostar, that's, that's for sure. Even the rear bench here, we have a continuation of blue swirl velour, and it looks like even going all the way into the back, too. So, boy, no expense was spared. It looks like you have a double moonroof and a headliner. You know, why not? If you're going to buy all that material, might as well put it every, everywhere. I totally support that. It looks like you have dual moonroofs in this Aerostar, which is absolutely incredible. So, yeah, it's a little rough around the edges. It needs a little mechanical work, but, boy... You know, for 800 bucks, just to do the seats alone would cost you more than that. And here we have another great shot of the uh, interior bench seats, completely done up in blue velour swirl that matches perfectly um, with your interior blue paneling everywhere. Looks like you could use maybe just a little bit of a vacuum, you know, clean it up, get that motor humming. Great shot of your wheel wells here with your uh, little, just the barely front edge of your running board here and get another nice shot at those. Looks like they're an almost not even their they're, they're, um, turbine wheels, but they're also like their wider wheels, which is just really outstanding. Kind of goes with the, you know, the chain link steering wheel. It all fits. The continuity is there, which I really, really appreciate. And of course, these beautiful white wall tires that really just complete the look. Um, we'll get our uh, mileage here. So that's interesting. They must have gone to a um, six-digit odometer. I believe my 86 Aerostar only has five digits. So that between 86 and uh, 88, they must have updated that. It looks like a true 306. You're obligatory. You know, show the mileage is correct. Brag that you've put over 300,000 miles onto an Aerostar. Um, and soon to be, uh, you know, just four-tenths away from 306, 550. Yet another milestone. Now this uh, speedometer is different also because um, unlike my 86 Aerostar, which has your, not a tachometer, but it just gets red around 55 or yellow around 55. And I think like red around 65, we don't have any of those uh, color coordinated here. So I guess that means you could just open it up. Now what I'm wondering, because this goes up to 160, Miles an hour? Can that be right? Is there really a 160 mile an hour speedometer st standard in a Ford Aerostar? I was going to say maybe it's in metric, but it looks like you have your metric here. Um, so this must be, uh, you know, SAE, which is absolutely crazy to think that someone could go 160 miles an hour in a stock Aerostar. But, you know, <laughs> I suppose uh, Ford was being very aspirational as they were in every single other element of the Ford Aerostar. Really just a great concept from start to finish. And um, the fact that this thing is driving around, and this is a 
factory produced spaceship on wheels, just incredible. What an amazing, immaculate, janky Aerostar. Just, uh, you know, jankified to the max, but every little touch is perfect. They all work together seamlessly with themselves. And I, boy, these running boards and the, and the body colored bumpers, they really just give it this like sort of low, mean, aggressive, yet sleek and refined uh, styling. So I'm absolutely smitten with this Aerostar. If anyone's out there in Montana and uh, buys this, please let me know. Um, you know, maybe you could even flip it to me, you know, if you're willing to, to get it in upstate New York, I'd, I'd probably pay a premium for this, even non-running. So, um, we shall see what happens to this one, but it is an absolute gem. So thank you so much for joining us here on Year of the Aerostar yet again here on Janky AF. And, uh, we'll have another one for you very soon. And until then, Janky do thank you. Okay, I have to do a very slight addendum. I'm editing this video and I'm noticing that it seems like the speedometer is in kilometers per hour because I'm noticing that where 60 miles per hour would be 100 kilometers an hour. So it seems like the, while you do have secondary markings, it's just reversed. So your miles per hour is in your smaller and your kilometers an hour is your bigger, which would mean that this is potentially a Canadian Ford Aerostar. And also what that would mean is that your mileage, 306, thousand miles is perhaps kilometers now i will have to check the description maybe it actually says that and i'll do that no it says 306k miles it doesn't say anything i don't think about being a canadian aerostar so i'm wondering you know i'm not the most reliable person in terms of facts and figures or even figuring things out famously i didn't know uh which side of the atlantic ocean europe was on <laughs> um but i think this may be a canadian aerostar that would explain the differences in sort of your um, the lack of uh, the, the, just the lack of red and yellow lines on the speedometer and maybe it is indeed uh, in kilometers per hour rather than miles per hour at least your primary gauges so that would explain it so perhaps this does not actually have 300,000 miles on it and it is indeed kilometers um, but anyways I, I couldn't let that go unsaid so I wanted to just put that in there and uh, until next time thank you thank you